click on file and then go down to open scene and open up die.mb so what I have here is just a cube that's been dropped into the origin of the scene so I just clicked on this cube button and it showed up over here I also renamed this uh, cube to die what we're going to learn in this unit is how to add textures and materials to our 3D objects. So the way that we do that is we take the object that's 3D and we unwrap, it's kind of like a skin, we unwrap that skin onto a flat surface and then we paint that texture in Photoshop. So what do I mean by this? If I go up to Window and then go to UV Texture Editor, right here I have my 3D object and it's displaying the UVs on this object. Okay, so the cube is the easiest to unwrap because basically Maya knows how to properly unwrap a cube. So if I right click on my cube and go to face, you can see the corresponding faces in the UV texture editor over here. So you can see as I click on the faces, they pop up in the UV texture editor. So this object right here is just flattened in the UV texture editor. So then what we can do is we can export these UVs, these guidelines, and bring it into Photoshop and then paint a texture. Then take that image and map it back onto the 3D object in Maya. So when you go to face, you can select a face and in the viewport you can move it. But over here in the texture editor you cannot move a face. You also can go to edge and you can select an edge. You can move it in the, the panel here but you can't move it in the UV texture editor. The only thing that you can edit in the UV texture editor are the actual UVs. So for example if I take a UV here and select it, I can move that UV in the UV texture editor. So that's what we're working with. Okay, so I'm going to right click, go to object mode, and leave this alone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to export our UVs since we have a cube and we don't need to make any changes to um, the UVs. I'm just going to export this and we're going to start working in Photoshop. I'm going to go to polygons and then UV snapshot. Now you have to make sure that when you do this UV snapshot that your object it's not in face mode or vertex mode. It needs to be in object mode and the object needs to be selected. So if it's selected, then we can go to Polygons and then go to UV Snapshot. Now I'm going to see if I can expand this window a little bit. Nope. So right here under UV Snapshot, it's telling us where is it going to save this. It's going to go to Exercise Files, Unit 9 Project Folder, and then I'm just going to use the arrows on my keyboard, going to the Images Folder and then Out UV. So I'm going to rename this not to out UV but die underscore out UV and let's see we'll make this 1024 by 1024. We're going to keep the aspect ratio and um, over here under image format make sure you're set to Photoshop. Okay, if you have all the same settings that I have, then hit OK, and that will export our UVs. So now I'm going to open up Photoshop, and I'll go ahead and just minimize Maya. So I'll go to Maya and then go to Hide Maya. And here I have Photoshop open. So I'll go up to File, and then I'll go to Open. And then I'm going to click on Exercise Files, then I'll double click on Unit 9 Project Folder, and then I'm going to double click on Images. So here we're going to want to take our dieoutuvs.ps file. So I'll hit Open.
and here are our exported UVs from Maya. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll go over to the layer editor here. I'm going to double click on this background layer that's locked. I want to unlock it. So we're just going to call this layer UVs. Okay. I'm going to create a new layer down here. And we'll just call this background, BG for background. And I'm going to drop this below the UV layer. I'm going to choose a color. So I'll just click on my color choose right here. I'm going to choose just red. Hit OK. And then I'll go to my paint bucket and make sure that I'm on the background layer and fill this with red. Now, nothing shows up over here in the image, but I can see over here in my layer editor the background is in fact red. So let's go in and edit our UV layer. What we want to do is we want to be able to see the lines for this UV, for the UVs on the object, but we don't want anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to first make sure that the UV layer is selected over here. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and I'm going to go to Invert. What this is going to do is it's going to take everything that's black, turn it white, everything that's gray or white, turn it black. It's going to invert all the colors in the image. So now here I have black lines and a white background. With this inverted image, I can go over here to uh, my layers, click where it says normal, and change it to multiply. And what the multiply option does is it makes anything that's white on that layer transparent, and anything that's black you can still see that. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to click on the background layer here and I'm going to create a new layer and I'll double click on layer one and we're going to call this, we'll just call this detail. So now I'm going to add a bunch of numbers for the die. So I'm going to take um, my marquee tool here. I'm going to switch from rectangular marquee to elliptical marquee. Okay, And I can click and drag and create any kind of oval shape that I want, but what I want is a perfect circle. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and then click and drag a circle to get a perfect circle. Okay, I'm going to just try and drag this to the middle of this square. doesn't have to be perfect, just eyeball it. Now I'm going to switch from my red color to white, so I'll click on this double-sided arrow. And then I'm going to go to the paint bucket and fill this selection with white. So there we have one face on our six-sided die. So from here I can just copy and paste this circle. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll um, just hit Command C, Command C to copy, or you could go up to Edit, Copy, right? So I'll hit Command C, and then I'm going to hit Command V, V as in Victor. So I Command V, and now I have a new layer over here. I'm going to switch to my Move tool, and I'm going to move this up. I'll put this in the center of this box. Okay, So I just pasted a new dot. Now I'm going to hit Command V again and oh, we have it. Yes, we want to apply this transformation. So let me see, I'm going to hit Command V again and here's another dot. And uh, I'll press return. And I'll hit Command V again. There's another dot. I'll take my move tool right here. I'm going to make my mouse move my mouse over until I have this four sided arrow. Drag it up here. OK. 
Okay, so I'm getting lots of layers here. And I don't really want this many layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse these down. So I can right click and go to um, Merge Down. I can also hit Command E. So E as in empty. So Command E and I can merge these together. So you can see um, under Layer, Merge Down, here's that Command E. You can see the reminder right there. Okay, so now our detail layer is all basically one piece. Okay, so I'm going to take my selection tool right here. I'm going to click and hold and go to rectangular marquee. And I'm going to take this. And I'm going to hit Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. Take my move tool and I'm going to just make sure the icon pops up with these four arrows and move this up. And then I'm going to move this arrow to the corner. You can see I have this double sided arrow that's turning the corner here. And I'm going to rotate. And let's see, we need to move this down. So then I'll press return here and we've got to do some more editing. So I'm going to go to my rec my marquee tool right here, select this, switch to the move tool. And I'll just move this up. I'll take my marquee tool, select this dot right here, switch to the move tool and move this up. So now I'm going to select all three of these circles right here. I'll hit Command C and then Command V to paste. Take my move tool and move this over. And I can't get it quite where I want it. It's like snapping right there. So what I'll do is I'll just use the arrow keys on the keyboard and that will just move it over slightly. Okay. So let's see what we have here. So layer two and layer one, let's merge those together. So I'll hit Command E. And then I'm going to just duplicate this layer. So I'll right click and go to duplicate layer. And then I'm going to take my move tool and move this layer down to the bottom. And once again, I'm going to use the arrow keys to adjust to make some, some more precise adjustments. So use the arrow keys on the keyboard. And I'm going to take my marquee tool here and this is going to be the number four. So I'm going to select these dots in the, in the middle here and hit delete. All right. So now I'm going to, let's see here. I'm going to go to the detail layer and I'm going to select the three dots here, hit Command C and then hit Command V to paste. I'll take my move tool and move these down to this corner here. And then I'm going to use my arrows on the keyboard just to make a sm small adjustment there. I'll switch to the marquee tool and I'm going to select this dot in the center and then hit delete. All right. So I'm going to select the number four right here, these four dots. And let's see, what layer is that on? I don't remember, so I'm just going to go ahead and merge all these down. So I'll hit Command E and merge these all together. So I've got these four dots selected. I'll hit Command C and then Command V. I'll take the Move tool right here. 
and I'll move this over. And use the arrows on the keyboard to make some more precise adjustments. And we just need one more dot. So I'll select the dot in the center right here. Hit Command C. Selected area is empty, okay? So yeah, these two layers are separate, so let's hit uh, let's combine these two layers. I'll hit Command E. Right here, I'm going to hit Command C and then hit Command V. Take the Move tool here and move this into the center for the number 5. All right. I'm just going to merge these two layers together. So we've got our numbers all on one layer. We've got our background on one layer. And then up here we've got our UVs that sh basically gave us the guidelines so that we knew where to place these numbers in our image. So let's go ahead and save this. So I'll go to File and then Save. Okay, uh, We can leave this set to maximum compatibility. So this file has been saved, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the visibility on the UV layer, these black lines here. We don't want those. And now I'll go to File, and then go to Save As. And right here, I'm going to go from Images, I'm going to go to the Unit 9 Project folder. So if you don't see this there, you can just go to Exercise Files, Unit 9, and then in the Unit 9 project folder right here, I'm going to go to Source Images, and we're going to call this Dye Color Map. And then over here under Format, I'm going to just choose JPEG. Okay, so now I'm going to hit Save. And the file size, we'll just set it to uh, quality uh, 8 or high. All right, so I'm going to now minimize Photoshop. So let me go hide Photoshop right here. And I'll bring Maya back. So here we have our UV texture editor. And I'm going to just move this to the side. I'll go to Window, Rendering Editors, and then Hypershade. And I'll just adjust this. So I'm going to leave Lambert 1 alone and create a new Lambert. I'll just move this down. Over here, let's bring up our attribute editor. So that's this button right here. So this, we're going to call this die mat. I'll press return. Over here under the color channel, I'm going to click on this button right here to map it. I'm going to choose File right here. And over here under File Attributes, I'm going to click on this little folder icon. And now it's taking me to my Source Images folder in the Unit 9 Project folder. So now I'll just choose Die Color Map and hit Open. So now I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button and drag this material onto our cube in the scene. Now, nothing showed up. That means I need to press 6 on the keyboard to display textures. If I select the cube here in the panel, you can see here's our UVs showing up and also here is the image that we created in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize, actually I'll close the UV Texture Editor, close the Hypershade. Let's go ahead and save this file. And then go ahead and make sure that you render out an image and send that image to the Dropbox.